Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trail Pass. So the machine behind me is a Kawasaki Mule Pro MX and today we're going to be kind of looking at it and exactly how we use it. Now this is not the most glamorous machine. It is a workhorse but it is still pretty comfortable and plenty powerful to do the kind of jobs that we're doing. You know whether you're using it around your hunting property or clearing trails around your house, trimming trees, whatever you might be doing, I think this would be a great machine that would fit a lot of your needs and it's not so uncomfortable that it couldn't still be used for the occasional trail use that sort of thing as well. Now, unfortunately, about this machine behind me, there's not a lot of uh, different types of reviews or really information about it. Uh, Kawasaki definitely pushes people towards their larger and more expensive machines, and honestly, I don't blame them. But I think for a lot of people, this machine would really fit your needs. And today we're gonna take a look at exactly how we use it on our property. So I made a short little video when we first got this machine, but now that we've been using it for a little while, I want to go an in-depth review on how exactly we use it. So uh, the, this particular Kawasaki Mule Pro MX starts around $10,000. And if you want to go for the LE trim, which gets you uh, power steering, the roof and aluminum wheels, you can pay upwards of about $12,000 for it. And then you can add all kinds of accessories up from there. But we kind of went with the mid range. So this one does have the electronic power steering, uh, but it is not an LE trim. Uh, the LEs actually just come in red in the model year that we were looking at it. And they had bright aluminum wheels. We thought for up here in the woods that this green was more fitting and we were fine with the steel wheels. You know, if we would bend one of these wheels on a rock, uh, it wouldn't be much of an issue just to go ahead and knock it back out with a hammer and everything would be fine. We wouldn't have any cracked aluminum wheels. And honestly, we're not running this thing at high speed. We're really concerned about the unsprung weight. Um, so for our purposes, we thought this would be a great machine, great color and great trim level. Now the base models don't have power steering, but if your uh, terrain looks more like mine where it is kind of rocky and uh, all kinds of hills, I think it's a huge selling point, something that we really looked for when we were looking at this machine and definitely makes a difference. So some of the stock items that are on this machine, you have a stock bumper, stock Duro tires, which are actually really nice. Um, both of those definitely allow for a lot of usability. You don't really have to change that right out of the gate. Uh, these tires have held up really well so far and uh, they've been used in all sorts of different conditions mud snow ice everything and they've been really great so far uh, this bumper that i just mentioned we did go on amazon and get a super atv winch a 3,000 pound winch which should be more than enough for this and we did go ahead and get steel cable uh, the reason for the steel cable versus the synthetic again uh, we use this machine for a little bit of everything clearing trails hunting um, it's not necessarily just used on the trail you know soaked in mud all the time the maintenance for a steel cable is really not that bad and uh, running that cable over rocks and around trees and everything else we thought that would be perfectly suited for this and actually those super atv winches are uh, really really nice i've heard from several people that's actually similar to a worn design but uh, these super atv winches are very reasonably priced uh, really easy to hook up and a bump it bolted in perfectly to the stock bumper uh, moving back here, one really interesting thing, and I'm not really sure why, uh, you can see the different lights here, and they're switched separately inside, but this is not an LED, it's more traditional bulb, and these are LED. So you have high and low beam for both, uh, but it's really interesting that one is LED and one is the stock uh, halogen lights. Uh, yeah, kind of confusing, honestly, because you get kind of the really bright white light out of the LED and the more of the soft yellow light. I have no idea why this is, and uh, I've been told that if you go with the LED trim, it's all LED, uh, so really confusing there. Uh, but the lights work great, and honestly, we do use them both. Um, you know, getting up really early in the mornings uh, when we're hunting, we try not to use the LEDs because they are so bright. We use that yellow, uh, you know, warmer color light, and uh, that works great for us. So moving back here, you can see that we do have. A windshield uh, this was bought aftermarket it is not a Kawasaki uh, branded windshield and it was let's say a little bit finicky to install we had to put these bands around the roll bar uh, which is fine no big deal but it just didn't line up exactly perfectly 
Uh, I guess that's what you get when you try to save a couple pennies and don't get the nicest uh, windshield, but it did work fine for our use. Uh, this one is plexiglass, not the true glass, like automotive style that you can spin. But uh, kind of our reasoning was, we just really wanted something to keep the water and stuff off of us should we get caught out on the trail when it's raining. Uh, this for our uses has worked fine. And ultimately, if we end up putting a stick through it, we can get it replaced and it's not that expensive of a deal. Now we did actually go through Kawasaki and get their true uh, roof. Uh, these roofs are really, really uh, reasonably priced in my opinion. Uh, they run about $100 and uh, very easy to install, very clean install, and they do work with the windshield, which was a big selling point for us. Um, so overall, with the roof, the windshield, and the stock doors, which again, another huge selling point, you don't have door nets, uh, you don't have really uncomfortable uh, you know, entry and exit. When you open up this door, it swings wide open and plenty of room to get your stuff in there, uh, get your, your legs in there, uh, and there's plenty of room inside. It's also plenty of uh, little storage cubbies, uh, really nice. It does have a center mounted gauge cluster, which I'm not crazy about, um, but overall, this is a utility machine. Uh, it really doesn't matter if you're going four miles an hour or five miles an hour. You know, with a machine like this, you're never really seeing super crazy speeds. You're never really trying to chase anyone down and say a razor or anything like that. Uh, for a utility machine, this does work really good. So moving back here into the storage area, you can see we do have a Nylite brand LED pod up there. This works great for us. Yes, it is just a cheap one off of Amazon. And we did go ahead and get a switch in here. It says rear light. Uh, and this works really, really great. Like I said, we use this vehicle for hunting, but you might use it around your farm also. And uh, that light not only works great for backing up if you know, you're doing that before the sun rises, but also to shine into your cargo area. So in our cargo area, we do have this Kimimoto uh, rear storage bag. It just ties on to the uh, rear roll bars there. And just for your smaller things, this works great. Uh, we you know, sometimes keep extra ammo in here, keep extra uh, walkie-talkie or batteries in there, um, extra rags, you know, flagging, uh, whatever you might need that is small and could often roll around. It is a soft bag, so it's quiet. You know, if you have ammo in there, it's not really jingling around or knocking around. Uh, and for our uses, it does work really, really well just for small items. You know, you might throw an extra water bottle in there. You know, whatever you might need is kind of at hand and it keeps it out of your actual cargo area. So this little bed is a dump bed, uh, but we really don't dump it a whole lot. The way it looks right now is the way we use it most of the time. We have our chainsaws in here, extra fuel, bar oil, say maybe a pop-up blind or safety ropes for your tree stands. You know, in other applications, you might use that dump bed. Maybe you carry firewood or whatever. Uh, but for us, you know, just the milk crate, the cardboard box, keeping all of our saws in place. And then um, these extra tie-down bars are great if you want to run a strap over something just to make sure it doesn't bounce out. Uh, but underneath all of this, you can see we do have a little mat down here. Kawasaki will sell you a, a rear bed mat, but honestly what we did is we just went to Tractor Supply, picked up, this is actually a horse mat like you put in the bottom of a horse trailer, and we cut it to size. This is way cheaper, and you have plenty of extra for other uses. It is rubber. Uh, you can see we have a little bit of oil on there, but it, these raised bumps do provide a lot of extra grip. And then underneath of this, it does have a true metal diamond plate bed, which is really nice. Uh, a lot of other competitors have just plastic beds. And uh, this is something that really stuck out to us as we were looking for a different machine. Uh, another thing that really stood out is this is a true two inch hitch receiver. One thing that we haven't been super crazy about is Kawasaki still uses the two-handled clasp to hold their tailgate shut. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with this, it is very sturdy, but you do have to walk around to both sides, go ahead and flip that down, 
Uh, and you do have a really great opening there, but it would be nice to have a more automotive style single hand tailgate latch like you might find on say a pickup truck or something like that. Like I said, this does work. It is plenty sturdy. You could sit on this and does have different cutouts uh, for where you might put you know, lumber in there to divide your bed. Maybe you put it down for lunchtime, you can throw your bottle in there and it won't slide out. Uh, overall, it is a really usable tailgate and does have great tail lights, brake lights as well. Uh, overall, a really usable bed on this one, uh, but I think it would benefit from a single handle tailgate. And then again, once you put it back up, you have to kind of hold the tailgate until you can run those clasps shut. That is kind of the one negative for the rear end of this machine. To put fuel in this machine, you don't have to open any doors or anything. Your fuel uh, can just be inserted right underneath that cap. Then moving into the interior, you do have your seat belts, which are sturdy. They stick up nice and high. This vehicle is speed limited without your seat belt, uh, which is a safety feature. I definitely understand why it's there, uh, but just keep that in mind. It will hold you uh, to really low speed without that seat belt on. Now underneath the seat, you pop that up, you see all sorts of different things. You got the side of your fuel tank down here, your battery, a little cubby there, which we have a first aid kit in and a couple extra rags. And then over here underneath the passenger side is just a wide open compartment. It is not weather tight. You can see a little bit of light through the holes there. Uh, but if you needed something else, uh, you know, to put your, put your stuff, uh, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, it does have a tilt steering column right there which is really, really nice, helps get in and out and helps you get a lot more comfortable while you're behind the wheel. So you can see here, I don't have my seatbelt on go ahead and start driving here and see where it limits the power. So here in this machine, power steering really makes it easy to drive this machine with one hand. You can see up here on the dash, you also have easy reach of your differential locker, your four wheel drive switch, both your LED and your halogen headlight switch, and uh, that rear light switch that we went ahead and installed. Now you can see they do leave you plenty of extra spots for uh, knockouts if you do want to add in any other switches. So you can really customize this machine exactly how you want. Now one negative that we just found uh, as we've been driving this machine more and more is with this Kimimoto rear bag, uh, you can see it actually does have a pretty nice headache rack to keep whatever you have in the bed from the factory. But when you add that Kimimoto bag, it does make visibility out of the rear a little bit more difficult. And we will be adding a rear view mirror to this machine really, really soon. Now I know we've already touched on it, uh, but the majority of this machine's use, at least for our case, is just rolling around here in low range, just cruising around on some of the trails that we have. But I know someone's gonna ask down in the comment section, what is the top speed and what is the power like? So let's go ahead and test that out. So set a low range, we're gonna go ahead and run it in high, just two wheel drive and see how it does. So we'll go ahead and start it up here. Kawasaki Mule Pro MX, one of the major benefits is it is a mid-size machine. It's not a super wide machine. It is around 60 inches or so. And uh, it does have both double A arms up front and in the rear. Now you can hear that thumper. It is just a single cylinder engine. And uh, overall, it makes fine power. This is not any kind of machine that's gonna blow your doors off and just really amaze you with its top speed. But as a workhorse, it is really, really great. Again, we cruise around mainly in low range, never really getting above 10 miles an hour. And I have a feeling if you're being honest with yourself, the majority of the time you won't either. So even in high range here, 
I'll go ahead and let off the throttle, going down a pretty steep hill here, and it's holding us right at three miles per hour. So very, very manageable. And then if you want to slow down from there, obviously you can touch the brakes. But one really great thing here that really stood out to us is just how well this engine braking works. Again, even from a stop, it does hold you back without even touching the gas pedal. So everyone, the Kawasaki Mule Pro MX. And what makes this mid-sized machine so great, you ask? Well, it's just that. It is a truly mid-sized machine. Now, it's not something that's 72 inches wide and 100 horsepower. And to be honest with you, crawling around at 5 miles an hour on our skinny trails, having a machine that is smaller, more manageable, and uh, not so jumpy on the throttle response is really nice. It is a really relaxed driving experience, both with that kind of mellow, single cylinder engine and with the power steering and Kawasaki really sets you up well here from the factory you know for a machine that starts between ten and twelve thousand dollars depending on your options uh, they really do set you up nice that front bumper the duro tires and the doors are a great start to however you're going to use your machine then from there you can further accessorize it whether you're going to be playing in the woods clearing trails or whatever you might do with your machine, it is really easy to add aftermarket accessories like the winch, like the windshield, the roof, and everything that we've done there in the bed of the machine. It is just a really easy machine to customize, and it is, again, it's a mid-size machine. It's not so small that it feels like a golf cart and it feels top-heavy, but again, it's not so large that even on these tight trails, uh, you know, it still feels really nimble, still very easy to navigate, and a really, really comfortable experience all around. The engine braking is huge for us. The power steering is huge for us. And uh, for two guys, it's often me and my dad out here clearing the trails and working out of this machine. It works absolutely great. So everyone, that's all of our thoughts on the Kawasaki Mule Pro MX. Now again, this is still a relatively new machine to us, and we will be using it a lot more in the coming years. So if anything comes up that you would like to see out of this machine, let us know. We'd be happy to make a video on that, or even answer some of the questions that you might have down in the comment section. But if it's your first time stopping by, please consider subscribing. It really does help us out. And uh, definitely check out in the description of this video our Amazon Affiliates link, so you can see where we got some of these uh, different accessories and you can get some for yourself it really does help us out when you consider subscribing and using those links it does help support the channel and helps us make future videos like the one you're watching right now so if it did help you out uh, drop a comment down in the comment section we love hearing from you all and thank you all very much for watching have a fantastic week everybody we'll catch you next time